What's going on, everybody? Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So the stock market's doing well today, guys. S&P 500's up 0.35%. The Dow Jones is pretty much breaking even, but don't worry because the NASDAQ 100 is up 0.7% with about 40 minutes left in the session. And today we're going to be talking more about the stock market, breaking down some technicals, going over a bunch of stocks to buy now. And I also want to share with you guys what stocks I own right now and enjoy general where my head is at as a trader and as an investor so if you guys find value hit the like button subscribe to the channel we're so close to 20k subscribers which is the goal for 2020 here and also don't forget to claim your four free stocks from weeble down below all you have to do is deposit a hundred dollars and you get four free stocks and again all of those are linked down below along with the discord chat and the facebook group so let's get into it guys s p 500 right now is is on a tear, right? You guys can see earlier in the day, if I pull up this intraday chart, you can see we actually sold off at market open. We got rejected at that resistance from yesterday at about 36.95. We failed breaking out of it. We sold off. But ultimately, as you guys can see here, based on this trend line, we actually held the uptrend. We held the higher low at about 9.40 a.m. here on the East Coast, and we rallied for the rest of the morning pretty much. Much, and we broke into that very, very cherished, treasured, let's say, $3,700 level, right? S&P was able to break that point, and we ended up rallying to about $3,705. We pulled back again, but notice how we held yet again a higher low from the low this morning at about $3,688 at about 2 p.m. here at about 36.92, we held that higher low. And then Fed Chairman Jerome Powell came, started speaking, dropped some knowledge about the economy, what's going on, and the market's been rocketing. And on top of that, we're getting stimulus here. Most likely, that's what they're saying, about $900 billion, maybe before uh, the, the end of 2020, maybe early 2021. We'll see. But it looks like we are getting a nice, fat, chunky stimulus package, which obviously the market loves that. And on top of that, we actually got a negative piece of news today. The November retail sales data, it was not as good as expected. But but like I said, guys, the market only cares about one thing and one thing only, that stimulus, that good old stimulus, those fat checks, all of that money printing, because that's what's pushing up asset prices right now at the end of the day, right? That's why we're seeing the big disconnect from the actual economy and the stock market. It's because of all the money printing, all of that money being pushed out. It's pushing up these asset prices and the low interest rates, of course, is not really making people want to save. So more people are putting money in the stock market. You guys get the point, right? So at this point in time, markets are rallying, stimulus, Fed, they're going to use all of those tools for the remainder of this crisis. And then they say when the crisis is over, they're going to put those tools away, which I'm not really buying quite yet, but we'll see what happens. And that's why we're moving. So S&P at this point broke out of the high from a couple days ago at 36.96. We broke from the high yesterday at 36.96. And now we're actually gunning for those all-time highs at 37.12, which could be the completion of of this right, or not the right shoulder, actually, yeah, the right shoulder in the inverse head and shoulder. And shout out to Tony. If you're watching this, you uh, you put a comment in my video yesterday pointing out the inverse head and shoulder, and that is spot on. That is absolutely spot on. You guys can see it here. The head at about 36.33. The left shoulder was formed at about 36.70. And then we saw the right shoulder form on the rally we saw in yesterday's session. And today, the fact that we broke out of this resistance again at 3700 that was pretty much the completion of that right shoulder and we could even break out higher from here honestly above 3712 so yeah shout out to tony for leaving that comment I honestly completely missed that inverse head and shoulder, but good thing you guys drop comments because you point things out that I miss and you point stocks out that I miss and sometimes I'm not watching either, which is great. So S&P is looking solid. SPY is the ETF 
graph that tracks the S&P. A couple levels to keep an eye out for here are 370, which we broke that today. That's a very good sign. And now it's looking like SPY is going for the all-time high, which is literally under a dollar away from where we are now at about 371.40. So it seems like we're back in this channel. I know there's a bunch of jazz here. Let me quickly clear the drawing set, but you guys can see we are back in this upwards channel here, and I'm seeing this maybe going up past 371. I can see the SPY ETF, S&P 500 as well, breaking out higher, and SPY could be getting to 372, maybe 373, uh, 374 based on the technicals I'm seeing. And when it comes to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, again, it's breaking even today up nothing, literally 0.00%, and we're under a big resistance, no doubt about it, under 30,250, 30,300. This is where we've struggled in the past couple of days, right? You can see it here very clearly. So I think the second we can take out 30,300, we're going to see a pretty sizable leg up on the Dow Jones, whether it's 1%, 2%, 2.5%, .2 nobody knows, but I think we are, uh, we are going to see that leg up. And the same thing on the downside. If we fail breaking out of 30,300, which is possible, we might be going down to test 29,850, 29,900, which is the support of this overall little channel the Dow Jones is in. And, and, and honestly, if that breaks, guys, we could be going even lower, maybe mid $29,000 um, level, maybe somewhere like that. So keep an eye on all of those points on the Dow Jones. And for the NASDAQ 100, what do you know? It hit all-time highs today, 12689 We broke the resistance from a couple trading days ago that we were talking about. And at this point, we could be going higher, maybe even 13000 I know it's crazy, but the higher and higher we get, the more and more we're going to need that pull down. So if we get to 12800 13000 maybe look for a pull down right around to about 12600 500 to maybe hold that as a new support. That's what I would think there for the NASDAQ 100. And shout out to the Russell. I keep saying this thing needs to pull down, but it keeps defying my wishes. And that's the stock market for you guys, right? It does the opposite of what you want. I've been saying the Russell needs to come down 17,000, 1750, right around this 180 SMA on the four hour chart. Heck, maybe even 1650. And it just keeps on trucking. And today it went up to 1966, which is yet again another all time high. So watch out for this stuff, guys. The stimulus, Fed, right? Watch out for more, you know, data that's coming out, like retail sales data. This is huge for the market. But overall, we know the, the, uh, the outlook is the stimulus. That rules everything, in my opinion, uh, in terms of catalyst. If we get stimulus, it doesn't matter what the heck else is going on. The market's going to go up. That's the way I'm viewing it, and I'm sure you guys could agree. So let me know in the comments your thoughts on the markets, what you're doing as always, and leave a like on the video. Maybe subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying the video and you do want to see further content like this because we are up... Uh, up I was going to say upgrading. We're uploading videos every single day here on the YouTube channel. So what did I do today? I didn't do anything today, guys. Yesterday, I, uh, I locked in some profits on Apple. You guys know that if you watch my video, I locked in at about $127.30. And today, Apple's up even more, up to about $128.30 at the time of this video. And I'm not sweating it because you guys know I trimmed about 30% of my position yesterday. Nothing crazy. I still want to have exposure to Apple, which is why I left that set. 70% in there. And I'm glad about it, guys. I'm, I'm very happy because I think Apple is likely to go up to the high, to, you know, I don't want to say high 130s quite yet because we're not going to, you know, jump the gun, but maybe low 130s. I think that's where it's going in the short term. So I'm holding on to that. And Exxon Mobil is one that Honestly, I was so close to locking in the quick profit earlier today um, at about $44. Now it's back over $44, so maybe that's a good thing I didn't lock in the profit because we could close higher. But this is one that I got in yesterday at $43.05, and I was like, maybe I should just lock in the quick little 2%. It's over 2% right now, a little bit over 2% profit that I have, but I didn't do it quite yet. And I might, who knows, after I'm done filming this video, if it runs up, 
uh, 44.20, 44.30. Maybe I'll end up selling out. But as of now, I'm holding on to XOM. Um, again, it was it was supposed to be a short term swing. And it's up a little bit. I might lock in the profits. We'll see. And I'll update you guys in tomorrow's video. And I'm still in Workhorse WKHS at about $22. This has been consolidating like crazy the past couple of weeks. Not much price movement there. So I'm still holding on to my shares. And same with SLV, which is a silver ETF here. It's kind of exploding today. What did I say about stimulus, guys? Stimulus, it not only pushes up stock prices, it deflates or devalues the dollar, which then pushes up the precious metals market, silver, gold. So we're seeing gold, silver today do well, and that's why I have, that's that's exactly why I have exposure to SLV. So that's what I'm doing, guys. Let me know what you guys are doing down below in the comments. I would love to. To know now, let's break down a bunch of stocks here. I have about eight to ten stocks to break down. Starting off with SBE, Switchback Energy Acquisition, which is taking, you know, it's a spec, guys. It takes it takes companies public. Let's put it that way. There's a bunch of these left and right. This this has been the year of the SPACs out there in 2020. And this is one that's in the EV charging space. This along with Blink Energy, right? And this one's down a good chunk from its high, about $9, $8, $9, down about 20%. And I'm liking the price action I'm seeing right now, right? And if you guys remember, we've talked about this dip on SBE in previous videos, in the past couple of videos. And I've been saying how it's, it's downtrending. It is showing potential for maybe a dip buy, but it hasn't really, it doesn't seem like it's bottomed quite yet. And now we might be at that point where it could be bottoming. We hit $32 yesterday. Today, we actually held a higher low at $34. Seems like we are ascending a bit here. And I think the second we end up taking off and breaking the highs from today at about $36, $36.50, I think the second we break that, that is where SB is going to change course, reverse course from selling off the past week to now maybe going back up, pushing up towards the resistance at about $39. And I think if $39 can break, this one's going, this puppy's going back to the 40s, guys, maybe $42, $44 even. So SBE, I'm very, very fond of this dip. I like it. I think there's potential, but I didn't jump the gun quite yet. I'm still being very cautious with my positions. I still have a good amount of cash right now, and I'm playing it safe. But this is at the top of my watch list, along with CIIC, which is another SPAC here, guys, which is taking a rival public which has a big contract with the UPS of about 10,000 units. And this is a very similar pattern. It's pretty much identical to SBE. But on the flip side, you know, comparing it to SBE, this one has actually already broken out pretty much. You guys see the downtrend it's been in the past couple of days. Now we've finally broken out of it. It seems like we hit a high of $29 earlier. We pulled down, uh, held a higher low at 28 and now we're ripping at another higher high and we're pushing towards $30, and I think a big leg up is going to come on CIIC above $30. That's where I think it could completely explode, and I almost took a position in this yesterday, like I told you all, but I didn't, and now maybe tomorrow I might allocate some capital to it. We'll see. That is ticker symbol CIIC, and again, these uh, uh, charts, they're very similar, SBE and CIIC, and LCA is another one, yet again, another SPAC here that is kind of similar to the previous two charts and more similar to CIIC because it has also broken out. You guys can see it here on the five-day, five-minute it was downtrending for a couple days. Now we broke out of the moving averages. We're up almost 10% today. This is a very good sign that this wants to get back up to the mid-20s and even above the mid-20s, maybe back up to that well, not even back up because it hasn't broken above 25, but maybe even higher than 25. Let's put it that way. So there's a lot of momentum shift in these SPACs, LCA, CIC, SB is almost there, but I think it's going to break out. So watch those three. And I've been getting a bunch of questions on S or not SB on BBY. And what, what is this one here? CRM. I've been getting so many questions on these two stocks, guys, because 
They've been beaten down, and they haven't really recovered at all yet. And they're trying. They're fighting, but they're not quite there yet. And if you all remember, we covered BBY Best Buy here a couple weeks ago. They reported earnings where I believe same store sales... Ah, I don't want I don't want to quote it because I don't remember exactly what they did. But the earnings weren't that great. Let's put it that way. They weren't, you know, star struck strucking earnings. Is that even a word? That's not even a word. But the earnings weren't great, right? Let's put it that way. And the stock went down a good amount, 121 to 102. I remember people were buying it at 110. And then once it broke 110, we covered on the channel. It's going to go to 102. It did that exactly. Went to 101, 102. And it's kind of been consolidating there for about a week or so at about 102, 103. Now it's up almost 1% today. And it's still not, in my opinion, a buy. I mean, yeah, you could get in before the confirmation, but this could be a bull trap. Who knows? We might not break out of this 50 SMA on the four hour chart. We might we very well might get rejected and push to the low to high to mid 90s again. We were just in the high 90s a couple days ago. If we get rejected here, we might fall down again. So that's kind of what I'm scared of. But on the flip side, I think if BBY can break 105, this 50 SMA on this four hour chart as well, that is where we could see on a technical basis a nice move up to the 110s. And then we might finally get that relief rally. But again, guys, I'm not there quite yet because we haven't broken out. And since I'm a pretty big technical trader, I rely on the technicals a good amount. I'm not taking that trade yet, but the second we break 105, watch it, watch BBY, there's potential. And same with CRM, right? We saw how they got into um, a merger deal there with Slack Technology. Slack went up like crazy, if you guys remember. It went up from 30 bucks to 45 and CRM on the flip side went down like crazy. It went from what? About 250 bucks down to 225 We were talking about it here at 230 If it held 230 maybe it could rally back up. It obviously did not hold 230 It dropped to about 220 Now it's holding 220 And I think, same with BBY, this one it very well could get rejected and go lower. It could be pushing down to 215 again, maybe 210. Who knows if this 50 SMA doesn't break. But on the flip side, if we break 225, we could see a short-term move to 230, maybe above 230 if this resistance from last week ends up breaking. So overall, I mean, if I were to bet... I'm thinking CRM in the next couple months will be higher than where it is now. But like I said with BBY, it hasn't confirmed the break quite yet, so I don't want to take the trade. But the second it even breaks 230, I mean, it could be going to 250 very quickly. So watch CRM, BBY for more, let's say, turnaround plays. I would put those there. And JKS is another one here that is going crazy right now, um, or it's been going crazy the past couple of days. Today, not so much, but it did actually gap up. I mean, let, let me let me let me rephrase that. It went crazy yesterday from fifty four dollars to sixty three dollars. That's crazy in my book. That's a thirteen percent move, and it ended up going down this morning from sixty three close yesterday. This morning it was at fifty seven, and it went from fifty seven to sixty three. So I guess two straight days where intraday movement was off the walls for JKS here. And I'm thinking on this four-hour chart, and you guys can clearly see it, we're in this pattern, whatever you want to call it. This is a wedge. This is a channel, whatever you want to call it. But we're at the resistance of this pattern, and we're also at the 180 SMA on the four-hour chart. So this could be a sell spot, but if it doesn't, if, if, if people don't sell here, if the bulls are able to break us out of, let's say, $64, $65 into the mid-60s, I think JKS in the short term has breakout potential, maybe back up to the 70s, 75. I mean, this is a stock that was hot very early in, uh, early in 2020. You guys can see it. I mean, earlier, actually not even early in 2020. It was in September of 2020. Um, it went from 20 bucks to 90 bucks. Now it cooled off from uh, 90 bucks to 50. And now we're starting to see some bullish momentum again. So we'll see. If it breaks out, I'm definitely interested. And a Chinese company here that I'm looking at is TCHY. This is Tencent. It's, it's pretty interesting. I think if we're able to hold this old resistance at 72, which was a resistance from back in July all the way to the beginning 
beginning of September. If we're able to hold that as a support and break out of this descending triangle, that could be a nice play there. But again, it's a descending triangle, which is a bearish pattern. So what that means is we're actually making lower highs into the base here, into a base support of about 72. So if this descending triangle plays out, I mean, we might see a dump off in 10 cent to under 70 bucks, but hopefully that doesn't happen. I mean, for us to go long on it, that would need to not happen, obviously. Hopefully we hold this 180 SMA and break out of 75 bucks. And hey, that could be a, a nice breakout play on Tencent. And Microsoft, Amazon, and Facebook, the big tech names, are finally showing, other than Apple, they're finally showing some breakout potential. Do you guys remember I called out Microsoft in this wedge a couple trading days ago? We, we've been talking about this happening, the breakout of this resistance. I was saying it's very similar to what Apple was showing a couple weeks ago when it broke out of 116, and now look where it's at, almost 130. Um, we, so we called that out on Microsoft. There's still a lot of potential. It's still the beginning of the breakout, which is why I'm covering it here on the channel. So watch out. I mean, if it holds 218 a little bit, that could be an entry up to the mid 220s, maybe 230. I mean, heck, it just cracked 220 right now. So watch out for Microsoft. Watch out for Amazon as well. Breaking out of that wedge. We also talk about that. And we've been saying how the tech stocks in general, the large cap, the big boys, Amazon, you know, uh, Facebook and uh, Microsoft mostly, they've been not doing much recently the past two, three months. And I think this rally is due. And, and again, I think it's just the beginning of the rally. So watch out Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook's another one that has not broken out of this wedge, but I think it's going to be gunning for about 285, maybe 290 in the next coming days. And Neo, I can't make a video without talking about Neo, guys. Neo is looking pretty good today, up 2.4%. It broke this 50 SMA or in the process of breaking this 50 SMA here on the four hour chart. And the fact that we broke this 20 day downtrend for the most part with today's session, that's a very good sign that reversal is inbound. This is the third straight solid day for NEO. And who knows, the selling could very well be behind us at this point. And it could be the, the, the light at the end of the tunnel uh, for NEO. And we might be going back to the high 40s, low 50s. So I'm watching NEO here. The, the reversal is looking pretty strong for the bulls. And ABNB, the last one. Airbnb, guys, what a day. Up 9, 10% right now. It was up earlier to about $140, so it was up about 12%. And we don't have much data to go on for the technicals here on ABNB, but what we do have is this EMA, the exponential moving average, which is the most fast reacting um, EM or moving average out there. So the fact that we only have a couple trading days here, I think EMA is probably one of the better um, you know, moving averages to use. But either way, we're breaking out of that EMA, the little downtrend here. So this could be the start of maybe a rally on Airbnb, maybe back up to 140, 150. We'll see how that goes down. Uh, but overall, the bullish break is looking pretty strong. So overall, guys, that is it for today's video. Hope you all enjoyed it, found some value. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. We're so close to 20,000 subscribers. And I finally used OBS today, which is a different screen recording software because my face has been uh, freezing on all of the videos. Well, most of the, a lot of the videos, let's put it that way. So hopefully this fixes the problem. I really hope so. If not, I'll probably have to find another software again. But overall, we're going to keep churning out the videos. And again, I hope you all enjoyed it. And maybe get yourself four free stocks. They're linked down below. All you have to do is deposit $100 into Webull. You get four free free stocks valued up to $1,600. And if you want to take out your initial $100 deposit, you can do that and keep the four free stocks. There's literally no loss on your end. Um, and you do help out the channel since I do get some free stocks as well. So I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching. As always, stay safe out there, guys. Peace out.